How's it going, friends and family? Jake from GD Honey Acres here. Uh, I'm going to go over my next phase in winterizing my beehives. But before that, please give me a like and subscribe. I would very much appreciate it. And any thoughts you have during this whole video, no matter where you are at the video, please put it down in the comments. All right, so what I decided is first off, don't go posting your issues on Facebook hoping for logical and deductive reasoning on how to do things. I went ahead and got a hold of John to ask his opinions on the issues we were having, trying to figure out how we were going to insulate our hives. And what we're going to end up doing is we're going to take a two inch board, the same dimensions as my Vivaldi board, and it's going to sit right on top and then the telescopic cover over that. Now remember, this whole area is going to be filled with burlap. So then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to have si uh, on the sides the foam long enough to come right up to here. Same on the back. Well, it's not going to cover these holes. These holes are going to be left open. That's partly why this thing was painted black. Just that when the sun's up, you hopefully heat this area up. So the front and the back of the Vivaldi board will not be covered by insulation, but the sides will be. So we need to figure out what length and width we need for each side. Well, let's go ahead and get to the paper here, start writing stuff down. All right, so we know for our deep boxes, they're nine and five eighths, let's say from here to here, right? So then we're gonna have two of those, and then we've got our inner cover, which is the three quarters of an inch. We got our Vivaldi board, which is three and a quarter inches. And we have the shim, which I made for one inch for height. So now let's figure out all the height here. So we got all these eighths, three quarters, one quarter. Well, let's make it all the same, right? Make our fractions all the same. So we have nine and five eighths plus nine and five eighths plus six eighths plus two eights plus three plus one. Now I should be able to add everything up. So we got eight, 18 plus three, so 21 plus one, so 22. So we got five eights, five eights, six eights, and two eights. So what we got here, so we got 10, 16, 18 over eight, that's going to be what? Two and two eighths. So basically two and a quarter. So we take this 22 over here plus two and a quarter inches. That'll give us 24 and a quarter inches. That's how tall our sides are going to need to be. So since we know that, we can go ahead and take our Vivaldi board measurement for the front and back, which is three quarter. We're going to subtract that from this. We're going to get basically 21 inches. So we're going to have two pieces at 21 inches tall, two pieces at 24 and a quarter inches tall. Well, what's our width going to be? It's pretty easy to figure that out. We'll take our Vivaldi board. No, it's the same dimensions. Let's go ahead and measure from here to here, 20 inches, and from here to here, 16 and a quarter. 20, 16 and a quarter. So our width, which will be this one, will be by 20 inches, and this one will be by 16 and a quarter inches. So that's how we figured out our dimensions for our foam boards. Now, one thing that I want to try to do instead of like butting them up like this, I kind of want to do the whole picture frame thing where you've got a 45 in here. That way we could unfold them and fold them together and they'd be perfect. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to add four inches to each of these. That way we got, you know, an extra two inches on each side. So this now converts to 20 and a quarter inches, and this now converts to 24 inches. So those are the boards we're going to need. So this will be the size. This will be the front and the 
the back. Now let's figure out how we're going to cut this. So, we went high, high. We need to go 20 and a quarter inches wide. I'm going to make my mark there. I'm just going to grab my T-square. This poor T-square gets used for everything from drywall to lumber. Now, even foam board. Poor thing is used and abused. All right, so that's going to be our first piece. What that's going to look like is like this. And then these sides will be cut at a 45. And we'll do the same thing with the side piece here so that way they can unfold and fold together for easy storage. I went and found an old circular saw that I'm pretty sure was my grandfather's or my great uncle's. I'm not inquire, entirely for sure on that. But it looks like it'll cut up to three inches. So I went ahead and cut a board and it worked great. So that's just how I'm gonna do it from now on on this. I'm gonna go ahead and make my mark, run the T-square down it. I gotta make 14 of these pieces. So let's get busy here. Remember guys, when you are working with power tools, safety is always, always, Number one, ear protection, eye protection, all that fun jazz. Like that. We've got our second piece. I'm going to go ahead and cut 12 more just like this. Okay, guys, correction. I was wrong. I don't need 14 pieces. I need seven. Because so I'll be able to do a cross cut on those and get my 14 pieces. Because these are only, let me see here, 21 inches high. So, yeah, that's a 48 inch board right there. That's four feet. So, I'll be able to get my cross cuts out of that. All right, guys, I got all my pieces cut for each side. I just followed the same for all my different lengths. So I just did it all with the circular saw. Now, this next piece, we've got the width cut, right? So now we need to cut our height here, which is going to be 21 inches, I believe. Yep, 21. So we've got 20 and a quarter width. We'll need 21 height. So I'm doing here. I'm going to go ahead and make my mark. Grab the same T square because I don't have a smaller one. Make our mark here. And now let's go over to the miter saw. So the miter saw here, I've got my line right there, right? I'm gonna go ahead and hold this up against the fence. Come out here, and I'll position it where my blade is just on this side of the line. All right, let's come out. Go ahead and cut. Now, as you can see, there's a bit of a problem here, right? All we're gonna do is just flip it over. It's that simple. Come in here, just kind of match the blade up with the already cut part and finish the cut. Just like that, and now that's how we're going to be cutting this, you know. So we got our 20 and a quarter by 21. I'm going to finish making these cuts, and we're going to do the same exact thing for the other side, except I decided that since I really needed 24 and a quarter inches for this side, these are 48 inches long is what they are, so I would need 48 and a half. So I'm thinking with the Vivaldi board, since they're painted with an exterior latex, I'm just going to cut these in half, and that'll do just fine. That's my thinking. We'll see what happens. All right, so I got all the pieces cut. They're over here. Now my next part I'm going to do is I'm going to put this 45 
and on each one so that when it comes together it's like that. Now I'm going to hold that together. When I have this laying flat like this, we're going to use, what is it, three inch wide Gorilla Tape here and on this outside seam. So that way it'll be sealed when you close it off like this. It's got a nice good seal. We'll wrap a ratchet strap around it. It'll be good to go. Now to make this cut, I'm going to go ahead and flip the table saw. We got the table saw, we got the blade at 45 degrees. Now, I don't know if this happens with all the table saws, but with mine, you got to move it, just go slow with it because the blade every now, every now and again likes to catch the foam and kind of jerk it a bit. So just go slow, don't force it so it doesn't jerk on you too bad. One thing I ended up doing, so my, my side pieces, they're going to be 24 by 24, so no big deal. Remember guys, you should always have safety glasses on. I'd be wearing mine if I didn't break it just a little bit ago. Let's go and get this cut. There we have our two pieces. They're going to be like those other two pieces I showed you earlier. I'm going to go ahead and finish cutting all these and we'll get ready to put it together real quick. So it's going to sit, I guess, right in there. That's how it's going to be. All right, guys. So I got fed up with the uh, jerking business. I was going off the table saw. So what I ended up doing, set the circular saw that I have up for a 45 degree angle and just cut it this way. Pull this up. All I have to do then, there you go. You're not jerking. I feel like it's a heck of a lot safer and I think I'm gonna do that with the rest of these. I went ahead, did the front and the backs with the table saw, but I'm gonna go ahead and finish off the uh, sides doing it this way with the circular saw. I feel like it's much safer. You choose, you decide which one you wanna do. All right guys, so what I've done here is I've lined up all my pieces. You know, the small one, also front, side, back side we have all the board openings here and here allow the airflow to help dry out the moisture that gets captured by the burlap now i've left a little bit of a gap between each piece and i'll line them up here all along the edge at the bottom of this other sheet of insulation now i've got here three inch wide gorilla tape all i'm going to do is put them right down the center of each deal and then I'll flip it over and do the same thing on that seam. So let's just go ahead and run at least one strip here. And you can go ahead and measure it out if you want to. That's fine. So what I did this spring when I had to make one of these is... Let me tear this real quick. Is I used multiple pieces of tape. That way I had a good, good and secured. All right, so I'm gonna tape this all up. Basically just like that, but multiple strips probably in each crevice. Then I'll flip it over to the backside and I'll show you what it's gonna look like 
And that's the end of this whole ordeal. So I got my taping done. Here in the seams, you know, I left a little bit of a gap. Then I went ahead and put one in the center, one on each side, and did that with every, every joint, basically, every hinge. Because those, cutting them at that 45 degrees will allow it to act like a hinge. And I did the same thing on the back side here. I did one down the center and the one on each side to make that hinge stronger. Now how this is going to behave, let's say, okay, so our hive is right here, right? So boom, at the back, so back, side, side, and then front. There we go. Then you'll wrap a strap all the way around it. And I'll pull it tight. And look at that. So you're going to have your bottom entrance here, your Valdes here. I'm going to probably end up making a little, probably just drilling a hole where my top entrance would be so they could have an entrance in and out. Or I'll take my little hand saw and just cut it down. I'll just that individually with each hive since the top entrance is in different spots. So that's basically the whole thing right there. So that's going to be my finishing touch to this. To wrap in my colonies, my hives. I will be painting the outsides of them with a latex exterior black paint. The latex because that's not supposed to damage foam. So that's what I'm going to go with. All right. Now, when I cut the piece out to sit on top of this with volley board, that's just going to be real simple. You know, measure this way, measure that way, make a square, put it on there. I don't think a video really needs to be made of that because that's it's just real simple. If you can make one of these, you can cut out a piece to fit on top of the Vivaldi board. All right, everybody, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Um, hopefully this gave you some good ideas. I originally got this idea from Vino Farm here on YouTube. One difference is, is he does just the back and the two sides. When I talked to John, who I mention all the time from the Hive Jive, he recommended doing the entire thing, which is fine. And especially since I'm going to be painting these black, these will help absorb the heat from the sun and help keep, help thermoregulate the hive. It's not really meant to keep the hive warm, it's to help thermoregulate the temperature inside the hive. Uh, Faith Apiaries, the, that bee man at Faith Apiaries here on YouTube also has a good video on what he thinks insulation does. I mean, yes, it's going to help hold in heat, but it's also going to help the bees, I guess, cope with the temperature variations outside the colony by wrapping your hive with the plastic, the coroplast, what have you, corrugated plastic, which is coroplast, and then doing foam board insulation like this, it'll really help them control their own temperatures in their hive body. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this. Give me a like and subscribe. Please leave comments down below if you have any other thoughts or what you're doing. I would love to hear what everyone's doing for winterizing their colonies this year or next year whenever you guys see this video. Let me hear back from you. I'll pray for your family, you pray for mine. Be healthy, be well, be kind, and uh, hope you're doing well whenever you are, wherever you are, guys. I'm gonna finish up taping these together and then throw some paint on them and get my boards cut for inside the telescopic covers. I'll catch y'all later, bye.